I do buy a lot of WWE merch, at least in my peak watching. But I bought like all of your guys' t-shirts. Yo, you know what's funny? Before you, you guys got called up. So, oh, before we got called yeah. up. That's love. So for those people who don't know, as a pro wrestler, I wrestled in the WWE with a tag partner, Big Cass. Big Cass. As saying, you guys, you know. So, yeah. So me and another guy named Cass, he was a... He's now W. Morrissey. Keep it your eyes peeled for him. On just a, a seven foot tall giant. TBS, TNT. I mean, maybe we'll see some more of him in, yeah. in the future, but he just did a spot on AEW. Big Kaz, uh, my former tag team partner, seven foot tall, played basketball at mm -hmm. NYU. Natural connection, me being from Hackensack, mm -hmm. New Jersey, him being from You played football, right? Yeah, I played college ball. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I didn't play an athlete on TV by any means, bro. As a pro wrestler, you know, you can hit the ropes, jump over mm -hmm. the top, do the flips. And that wasn't my gimmick. That wasn't my, my deal. I just talked that shit, man. Yeah, it's crazy because uh, I remember watching you guys in NXT and I just remember being like, you guys got the craziest crowd pops. And then your mic work was like. Yeah, you know, I. I owe it all to that crowd, bro, as you would say. You know what? Like, so what you're talking about is NXT is the farm system of the WWE at the time. At the time, they didn't have any shows that left, like, the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. So you were living in Tampa, and me, we were becoming, you know, a wrestling tag team, me and Big Cass. Yeah. On the indie kind of scene of WWE, like just florida but then we left florida and then they did the barclays center we yeah i was O2. at the i was at barclays Yo, so that shit. was a uh, summer so, summer slam 2015 so we went from like literally we'd be wrestling in a little armory on a thursday I night have the, i have the summer slam t-shirt or the uh the, the uh, nxt takeover t-shirt oh, yeah. man i didn't keep any of that shit man i should i should have kept a book you, you know? guys wrestled that night that was the night of uh it was sasha we, we charlotte and bailey first. yeah we you the guys first people to come through the curtain mm -hmm. that weekend and holy shit, what a homecoming. Man, for sure. I had the Yankee pinstripes on. I remember that. My man, shout out my boy Spiff TV, had me dripping. Yo, you always had the crazy fits, though. Oh, he had, you know, like, this is a gift from Spiff, man. Shout out my man Spiff. Like, these... Mm -hmm. Spiff's a big wrestling this, fan as well. This is real. So, you know... Uh, Florida legend. Wrestling, man, it, it, I owe a lot to it. It was a great opportunity, but for me, it was a runway, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I was known for the sneakers and the, and the, and the swag and the, and the clothes and, like... That Barclays, I had that Michelin S Yankees with the New York City skyline mm -hmm. by my seamstress put in in Leopard with Biggie, the picture of him in the Coogee counting the money with a, with a, I put a fucking Statue of Liberty crown on him and I wrote, it was all a dream. Like I was swagged the fuck out. Nobody else was wearing the Jays mm -hmm. at the time. You and were doing rocking that. Jordans, yeah. But I saw it as a runway, like pro wrestling, like, yo, this is like a, a great opportunity to like be seen. So what you want to walk out there in underwear? I mean, all credit to my fucking Dwayne Johnson and Steve Austin right, and right, right, fucking right, right. Hulk Hogan. They did it, dog. Yeah. But I was fighting an uphill battle. I'm not well, yeah, a big you're a guy, smaller you know? guy and I feel like um I feel like you kind of like made everybody kind of elevate their mic work. Because I man, I did like when you guys. I felt like you you were the most entertaining. Like well, it was like this, it know, was like you and Paul Heyman. Never been nothing like me, and there never will be. No, it hasn't happened yet. Some I, of your promos no, you would cut were just. There fucking. ain't no comparisons you could draw because I had this great blessing of Dusty Rhodes in my corner that allowed me to write my own shit. Whereas mm. most people didn't have that opportunity. Now, who the fuck right now in the situation is going to tell Vince McMahon, let him say what he wants? You know, I had Dusty Rhodes in NXT go to Vince like this kid. His He's money, got it. Let him do his shit. And now all of a sudden I'm writing my own shit and saying my own shit. And Cena cosigns me early. Mm. So now Cena's in your corner and he wants you to say your own shit. See, when you're in a room with other wrestlers and a producer and a writer and you guys are green and you're new in the business, mm -hmm. like you don't have a say in like, you know, and for one, imagine this. All right. We go out on TV. There's seven, seven minutes blocked out for our segment. All right. You got seven minutes curtain to curtain from the time you go through the curtain to the time you get your beauty shot at the top of the ramp of the victor. Right. right now within that seven minutes you're going to a commercial break that'll be two minutes so you have five so now you have you have five but it's right smack dab in the middle but you got to still entertain the crowd when the cameras aren't right. rolling for so now it's a live audience you're working for too but you're really catering to the millions on tv right but if you're end zone you come out talking shit and you got opponents in the ring and we've only got five minutes and i'm in a match with four people not two i got big cast my tag partner mm -hmm. and i got another two guys so you mean to tell me I'm going to talk shit about you for three minutes and then I'm going to do wrestling moves to you for two minutes. What the fuck are you going to do? What are you going to do? So my job was real easy and real simple. I'm going to talk and that's it. I'm not allowed to do wrestling moves because we don't have fucking time for it, bro. Right. 
You know, I got to make the heels look like they're beating my ass. If I don't beat somebody, who the fuck did I just beat? Mm-hmm. You didn't beat nobody. What the fuck? If you're just talking shit about them mm-hmm. and, and they ain't credible and nothing. And know, then so. you get the the, the, the the high climatic tag, big cast comes oh, in. Oh, that was the recipe, man. So it's like probably the easiest job. I go out, I'm like, fucking bottom boom, how you doing? Somebody get, hits me from behind, right? Yeah. Now I'm in the corner and I'm getting beat up. And then you were and like, like ah! Cass, Cass hasn't even gotten in yeah. the ring, yeah. you know? It's the simplest recipe ever. Yeah. Open every NXT show around the world. Open every WWE show around the world. This works. Big guy's in the corner. We can't get him in. Enzo says, you're soft. They spell it out. Soft. Enzo gets hit. I'm just getting beat up, bro. So I never had to show that I was an athlete. I never right. had to wrestle. All I had to really do was tag in the big guy. And I had to learn how to take an entertaining ass kicking and draw empathy for people and make them want to. So that was really my forte, I think, was selling in wrestling, what we call selling. And that is a, a hey, that is a serious uh, talent. 